Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Denmark once again and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel a number of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, a good few different styles, and if people were to ask me about this brewery, I would say that they're just very solid all round. We've had some really nice German things from them in recent times, uh, we had a few American styles of beer from them before that, and I think we've had one or two more more English type things as well actually. But the beer that we're going to have a look at today is a style that I have tried from them before, albeit not in quite some time, and it was one of their Christmas 2022 releases actually. So needless to say, I'm very curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us. Hopefully it's another good beer, hopefully it makes for an interesting review, and as always I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head over to Uland, the mainland part of Denmark that's attached to Germany. We are going to go to the Jursland Peninsula and we're going to go to Abeltoft, which of course means that we're going to have a look at yet another beer from the wonderful Abeltoft Gord Brewery. So this particular beer is called Hem to Lule, Home for Christmas, but it also seems to have a name called Citra Kiss, so I will have to check exactly what we call this video when this one publishes. But this comes in at 6.3% ABV, and this one is a New England hazy, whatever you want to call it, IPA. Uh, when it comes to this style from Abeltoft, we've had some really nice beers in that category before. The one that really comes to mind, though, was the uh, Raw Power, which I think was the very first beer I tried from this brewery, if memory serves me correctly. But this one actually came as a recommendation from uh, Jessica at the beer hive in Amar in Copenhagen. She gave me this bottle, so a big thank you to her for making this review possible. And uh, Jessica and Nicolina at the beer hive all Always have a really good selection of Danish stuff. Pretty much all the Danish beers that you see me reviewing here on Rampant Lion Reviews come from their shop. So make sure you check out the link to their Instagram or Facebook in the video description below. Go give them a visit. Like I say, very nice selection of Danish stuff along with other things. But I mainly go to them for the Danish stuff, of course. But uh, yeah, let's crack on then and see what this beer is going to have in store for us. My first IPA from Abel Toft in quite some time, actually. So as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting though, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Abeltoft Gore Brewery before, and we will no doubt add more to that at some point in the fairly near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support you give is hugely appreciated. And remember that you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system. Just go to the search bar, put in your hometown, state, county, province, whatever you like. And if I've reviewed beers from your local area, they will pop up. Failing that, you can check out the playlist of different beers from different countries. And you'll find this one in the Danish playlist along with many others. But yeah, let's go on to my brewery notes then and chat a little bit about Abeltoft Gore Brewery then. So Abeltoft Gore Brewery, as I've told you before, is based on a farm, hence the word gourd in the uh, in the name which is on the Jerusalem Peninsula near Randers and Arthurs on Nid Uyland. So the owner of this brewery is Peter Zako Hansen, who was originally a mechanical engineer, but he later decided to become a brewer and he's self-taught. He experimented a lot with home brewing, from what I understand. Uh, but this brewery is located on an old farm complex that has been converted and it can be found just on the edge of the Molsbjerge National Park, which is supposed to be very beautiful. But the company was founded back in 2008 and they've just been expanding kind of gradually over the last few years. But in addition to beer, the company produces cider, bottled water, and also lemonade and Peter's brother Christian also works with the company to importing coffee and roasting it and experimenting with that but the brewery has a small cafe on site where you can drink the beers and enjoy the views of the Kattegat which is the area between uh uh, Uland in Denmark and the sort of west coast of Sweden. So again very beautiful area famous for the Vikings of course and uh, this area is uh, just very well known for its nature you know most of Denmark is actually quite flat I think their tallest hill that they have is about 146 metres above sea level so you'll always see that when you fly over to Denmark but if you look at the pictures of this place on the website it does look very nice so I hope that I can go get over there in the summer and take a little look at it. Uh, but as of December 2022 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced 250 different kinds of beer according to Untapped and uh, the current brewer is Ben Howe who comes from the US and uh, it was another American brewer that they had that originally did the raw power and that was what really kind of gave this brewery a good name. 
uh, in Denmark actually and of course they've been doing really solid stuff since then. I also know Max Allers is involved with the brewing as well. He's from uh, Uruguay in South America. Lovely guy actually and I, I always tend to bump into him at beer festivals actually. So yeah, Ben and Max are the ones doing the brewing at Evil Toff these days. So uh, yeah, like I said, very solid all-round brewery. Do some really solid German beers in my experience. And uh, they also have some uh, some really good American stuff too. So if you get the chance to try some of them, I highly recommend it. And hopefully we can get an out and about video done at Evil Toft at some point. I should talk to Max about that and see if we can figure something out. But yeah, let's crack on then and have a wee look at the beer itself. If you want to learn more about the brewery, as always, check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So uh, yeah, let's go on then and have a little look at this. So as you can see, the artwork on this one is kind of similar to what we've seen from Abeltoft Gord Bravery before. Quite straightforward, but you know, just really nicely done. As we said earlier, the uh, name of this one is Hemtel Yul. I'm probably pronouncing the Danish wrong in this because Danish pronunciation is quite difficult. But yeah, it also has the name Citra Kiss. So I'm guessing there will be Citra Hops in this one. But there you can see on the bottle cap of this one, let me just bring that in so it will focus. Put my face behind it. There you are. You can see the nice kind of Viking runic uh, things on there, which are quite cool. And that, of course, I think just is to symbolise the Viking heritage of the um, of the area that they're based in. So yeah, like we said, 6.3% uh, New England hazy IPA. This one contains citra hops, fro fresh frozen citra hops, this one. So yeah, let's get this guy out into the glass and see what we have. I don't know what this beer cost actually when it was there because like I say, Jessica very kindly uh, gave me this one and told me that I had to review it. So, uh, or that I should review it, I think she said. Don't want to put words in her mouth. But yeah, it was right, really kind of her to do that. So yeah, let's get this guy out. We'll get on with the tasting then and see what we have. Yeah. Oh, got a little bit of sediment coming up to the top of the bottle there. There you go. So, uh yeah anyway this one is poured pretty much as you would expect from a modern ipa so you can see there's a solid uh yeah there's a solid kind of half finger of a frothy i would say perfect white head on this one one or two uh big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass there but quite a few little ones going up toward the bottom of the head but as you can see the head on this one is really nice mix of medium bubbles in there and smaller ones going up top but you can see lovely kind of bright mango juice yellow color this one so um yeah remember the color of your beer depends on one the type of malts that you use this goes a long way to determining your ebc rating two the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort the more the sugars caramelize and thus you get a darker color of beer but any barrel aging that you do or any adjuncts that you put in will affect the color of the beer too uh, but when it comes to IPAs, you don't often have to care about that particular variable. But uh, yeah, this one certainly does look pretty much as you would expect from a kind of modern New England hazy IPA. In terms of the level of haze in this beer, as I've told you before, the haze in these beers depends on the oak content, the wheat content, and to a degree what yeast you use. Uh, but this one certainly isn't the soupiest and gloopiest of New England's that we've uh, that we've come across. So uh, yeah. Appearance-wise, this one does look very, very nice. Um, yeah, I like, I do like this one actually. So, um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else I really need to say about the appearance of this one, but it really does remind me of a kind of mango or pineapple juice or something like that. So, yeah, the head has faded away to be a nice kind of thin foamy layer, but like I say, nothing else we really need to say about the appearance of this one. So let's move on and take a wee look at the aroma and just see what this one has in store for us. So yeah, aroma-wise, this one is, um, it's actually, it's quite interesting, this. Um, it comes across as really sort of oaty and kind of creamy, but at the same time, I'm getting a lot of breadiness out of it, but I can't figure out whether the bready character is coming from the wheat or coming from the, uh, or the, the, the barley malt. This is kind of interesting. I just want to check whether this does have both. And it, yeah. Oh, it only contains oats, apparently. It's, it just contains, uh, yeah, 
and you see uh, barley malt and uh, oats actually I thought this would have contained a bit of wheat so it must just be coming from the barley malt actually I've not I don't think I've had a New England IPA that's not had wheat in it for quite some time so this should be quite interesting from that perspective too but yeah um, aroma wise as I say it's not the most madly pungent of things but I think it's uh, I think it goes together really nicely so yeah in terms of the um yeah in terms of the uh the malty backbone of this beer just in general this beer it's got quite a nice kind of smooth green component to it you've got lovely juicy fruity notes in there of course and then you've also got a big kind of smooth malty character as well um yeah aroma wise I think this is on the malt if we break the aroma down a wee bit more I should say on the malty side of things yeah the backbone of this one is kind of what you'd expect you've got a lovely little bit of that kind of fresh white bready bread crust in there absolutely so lovely fresh white bread bread crust on top of that there's a little touch of woodiness and a little bit of a little bit of a crackery character um so yeah kind of interesting how that uh how that all goes together um but the malt base is quite straightforward in this one like i say it's bread crust a little bit of cracker a little touch of wood those are quite minimal then you get the big fluffy white bread in this one and then you get the ot notes out of it and like i say this beer it really is very kind of creamy in a lot of ways there's a lot of creaminess to the oats in this as i've always said when it comes to new england ipas the oats are always a very good indicator of how fresh your beer is and this one the oats are really really creamy in this you get a little tiny touch of dryness out of them but not overly much um and as i say that the the creamier the oats are the fresher your beer is the drier they are the, the older it is but you can really get a lot of that kind of fresh creamy note out of this one but on top of that you've got this lovely kind of uh you've got this lovely slightly butterscotchy butter candy Werther's original note which is quite common in uh, New England IPAs these days um, but yeah for me this one you do get a little touch it must be a placebo but I do certainly get a little touch of a wheaty uh, bitey uh, note at the back of the nose there and um, if I was to smell this blindly without knowing there's not wheat in this uh, I really would think there was just because there is that wee bit of wheaty bitiness at the back of the um of the nose there but as i've always said as well in these videos when new england ipas for me there are six elements to think about with these beers the first one would be the kind of the, the kind of um yeasty farmhousey type character then you've got the rye leaning sort of grainy side of the things and then you've also got that um you also have that uh the those two notes i should point out are a little bit more common in american brewed new england ipas but then you've also got wheaty bitiness oaty creaminess barley malt bread and also a little touch of, uh, of sweetness in there so um yeah the way the aroma goes together in this one i think is um is really really nice it gets a big thumbs up from me in that sense lovely big sort of smooth oaty creamy note for sure i think it really does lean more toward the oaty side of things but let's focus on the hoppy character out of this beer now so for me the hoppy side of the beer uh, you can tell with this one it uses mainly late addition and dry hopping uh, and as I've always said too there are three types of hopping when it comes to IPAs early addition hopping which gives you mainly bitterness the first hour of your wort boil they do that and um, there's late addition hopping within the last half hour of the wort boil that gives you a little touch of bitterness but mainly um, uh, you know mainly flavour and aroma and then dry hopping after the uh, after the the wort boil takes place that gives you all flavor and aroma so yeah new england ipas tend to rely on the latter two west coast ipas use all three it's not uncommon for new england ipas to use a little bit of early edition hopping but yeah usually it's very very minimal but yeah with this one you, i think with this one it is you can tell that it's relying mainly on late edition and dry hopping because it has got quite a nice bright green component to it if you use early edition hopping it's usually a lot kind of more dank and deep and things but you've got a lovely bright floral character to this one and i really find that the the um i really find that the, the green component in this is quite wet so the floral notes in there it's quite the floral notes in there are quite bright but at the same time quite wet then you've got that nice kind of wet grassiness and zestiness coming out of the beer so yeah i really like how this uh how this beer how this beer goes goes together actually um 
Yeah, aroma wise, very, very nice on the green component. When it comes to the fruitiness, it's giving you pretty much everything you would expect from Citra, but it's very, very soft actually. And I think that's because it's probably, you know, just fresh hops that have been frozen straight away. But yeah, the fruitiness that you get with this one, there's a wee tiny touch of passion fruit to it. And the passion fruit, interestingly, is quite soft. I've always associated Citra with a more kind of pungent and strong passion fruit but you get quite a bit of soft passion fruit out of this one you've also got that lovely juicy mango note in there lots of apricot as well which you and a little bit of papaya which you can find from citra um but as i say this beer really is showing off the um this beer is really showing off the uh the kind of smooth uh, side the smooth side of the tropical fruits in citra but on top of that you have a lovely kind of um Yeah, on top of that, you really have a lovely um, kind of little touch. You've just got a little touch of this kind of lychee note, but also a little bit of the lemon limey character from Citra as well. But really, as I say, this beer is surprising me just with how soft the, the Citra aroma is. So just pay attention to that in this beer. I think it's really quite interesting. So, yeah, as I always say, take a wee bit of time to enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But I think it is about time that we taste this one and see what it's all about. So, uh, yeah, this one is the uh, Hem to You, Home for Christmas, Citra Kiss from Abeltoft Gold Breggery in Abeltoft, Jursland, uh, in mid Uland over in uh, mainland Denmark. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, Skoll, cheers. Yeah, I can see why Jessica liked this one. I have to say that straight away. That is a really nice, just very smooth and drinkable uh, New England IPA. You can't really ask for much more from the, the single version of this style than this one's given you actually um yeah it's one of the for me the first impression of this one is it's a really smooth creamy and oaty leaning new england absolutely the green component has a wee bit more potency and kind of floral character to it than uh, the aroma would have you believe and you've also got a nice just smooth grassiness to it as well which i, I can certainly appreciate Yeah. So it's interesting this one actually too. You can still taste the freshness of the hops in this. Uh, it doesn't say when it was bottled actually, but I'm guessing it was bottled sometime probably in late, uh, late mid to late November. Um, but yeah, still very nice. Let's just break this beer down and describe it for you a wee bit more in depth. Um, yeah, so middle third of your palate then, you can feel the backbone of this beer, it's got that lovely kind of fresh white bready character to it, you get that little bit of the kind of bread crust in the base, further forward on that middle third of your palate, you've got just a little touch of woodiness coming out of it as well. So yeah, lovely little touch of Weediness there further forward. On top of that, you've got a little bit of Jacob's Cream Cracker. And interestingly with this beer, I wasn't really picking up so much of it in the aroma. But above the kind of crackery layer, you've got a little bit of a kind of wholemeal. Uh, you do have a little bit of a wholemeal, brown bready sort of thing. So, yeah, the way that that goes together is quite nice. And it's that kind of lingers into the aftertaste a bit too, for sure. You definitely get a wee touch of that... Um, you definitely get a wee touch of that Werther's original uh, butter candy stuff in the aftertaste as well. But yeah, you, you absolutely get more of a kind of brown wholemeal bready character out of this one than I was expecting you were going to have. So yeah, above the wholemeal brown bready layer though, you get that more fluffy 
white bready character and the, the white bread in this beer is actually quite airy so the brown bread layer the kind of wholemeal brown bready layer for me feels a little bit more dense than the white bready layer does but then of course above that you've got a more you've got a more um kind of uh i would say you get the more kind of oaty notes out in beer the oats in this one are quite interesting so yeah the oaty side of the beer for me um, is really kind of creamy. You can still tell this beer still feels quite fresh, but on top of the white bread, you can feel down the middle line of the tongue, you get that really sort of creamy, that big, smooth, kind of creamy, almost porridgey type note out of the oats. But then as you move out further toward the, edge of your, the edges of that middle third of your palate, you get more of a kind of slight dryness uh, to the oats which is kind of interesting. But then right in the dead centre of your palate, you can feel there's that little touch of Werther's original butter candy, butterscotchy character coming out of the beer. And then above that, you start to get a little bit more of a McVitie's digestive biscuit -y note. So I really wouldn't be surprised if there's a bit of golden promise in this beer. There's just something about the flavours in that middle, um, in that middle third of your palate that are telling me golden promise. I would love to know if these guys are actually producing some of their own malts as well. I didn't see anything on the website about that, but um, you know, when it's a farm brewery, you always do have to wonder, um, because these guys with the malty character they have, there is just something a wee bit unique about the, the kind of oats you get in this one. They're really porridgey and really uh, sort of creamy. So that's something that really kind of strikes me about this beer, is just the way the oats come out, because uh, it's quite different. But it could just be the lack of uh, wheat presence in this beer that makes the oats and the kind of creaminess from them a little bit more noticeable. Interesting point. Uh, other than that, I don't know if there's really much to say about the middle third of the palate in this beer. So let's go on to the back third of the palate. So the border region between middle third and back third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of that white bready buildup, so that's quite nice. Uh, the base of the back third of your palate has a bit more kind of... Um, it has a wee bit more of a kind of fresh bread crusty uh, note to it in there. So I like that. So, yeah, there's a little bit more of a kind of fresh white bready bread crust in there, which I do um, quite like. And it's, it's a bit more grainy and dry. And of course, we've said this on the videos many times before, the more kind of grainy and bitter flavours come out further back on the palate, whereas the sweeter and juicier flavours come out further forward. So you've got that more grainy bread crust, you've got that more kind of grainy bread crusty character, you get a bit more dryness from the, the cracker on the back third of your palate too, then you've got the wholemeal brown bready character that sits above the um the wholemeal brown bready character sits above the, the crackery notes there, and it is quite airy and quite fresh, then above all of that you have more of that kind of fresh fluffy white bread in there. Uh, so same kind of flavours as you have in the middle third of your palate, but again, they're just taller and a lot more sort of airy. Above that on the back third of your palate, you do get a little touch of dryness out of the oats. And then above all of that, you get some of the kind of yeasty notes coming out of the beer. So for me, the yeasty character that this beer has is very light and airy, like a sort of, um, very much like a kind of farmhousey bready character there's a little touch of almost honeycomb there but absolutely in that back third of your palate you can see the flavors are taller there and then as you come further forward into the middle third of the palate it just kind of condensed down and squashed together that wee bit more so yeah so the The I think that's everything we need to say about the malty and yeasty side of this beer. Filming this review a wee bit tired, by the way. That's why I'm like uh, a wee touch. So yeah, I apologise for that. But yeah, uh, in terms of the the hoppy side of this beer, then let's go on to that. In the back corners of the palate, you do have a little tiny touch of earthiness to this one. But as you come further forward, you do get a little bit of herbal character, but then it becomes more kind of floral and spicy rather than anything else. So that's that's quite interesting with this beer as well. Mm. 
on the yeah on I, I think as you move toward the front corners of the palette there's definitely a little touch of a kind of floral spicy character there and then round the front curve of the tongue it's a little touch more sort of grassy and, and sort of zesty. You do get a little touch of grassy zestiness on this one, but for me, the green component is very wet. And they said, like I said, they said it was fresh hops that had been frozen. So if it's really fresh hops and they've managed to freeze them, you know, quickly enough, you will lock in a little bit of that wetness that you get from sort of whole cone and fresh hops, actually. Um, so that that's quite interesting. So the name Citra Kiss really makes sense in this because it's, it's just, the hop is just showing you its nice kind of light and softer side, actually. Uh, but yeah, green can put for me more floral leaning, but a little bit of grassy zestiness. So uh, yeah, I like that. I do like how that goes together for sure. So I think we can leave that there for the green component. Let's go on to the front third of the palette and focus on the, the kind of fruity side of the beer for a little bit. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palette, again, you get a little bit of a kind of fresh white bready build up there. The base of that uh, front third of your palette, you've got a wee bit of bread crust in there, then you've got the more kind of fluffy white bread and maybe a bit of smoother oaty character as well. But then above that, you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. So yeah, let's look at the fruity side of things. So um, on the, at the back of that, uh, at the back of that, front third of your palette you do get a little bit more of a you do get a little touch of that more pungent side of the citra hop for sure you do get a little bit of that more pungent passion fruit but as you move further forward you get the juicier mango and as you reach the middle of that front third of your palette it is more of a kind of uh, apricotty it is more of a kind of apricotty and pineapple-y uh, type thing that's there but as you move into the uh, front half of that front third of your palette it's kind of interesting you do get a little for me i actually get quite a little bit of oily lime out of this one uh, and citra can give you that so it's, it's for me it's just quite interesting to see that sort of oily lemon limey character um coming out of this beer as well because it's for me citra is more of a tropical hop so it's interesting to see that side of this the hop coming out that wee bit more but yeah pungent passion fruit juicy mango a little bit of a so a little bit of an apricotty and uh, kind of yeah a little bit of an apricot and papaya type note in the middle third in the middle part of that front third of your palate and then just a wee bit more of an oily limey character there as well so yeah the way the fruity notes in this beer go together is really quite interesting for sure citra showing a really soft side in this beer which I'm not quite as used to actually but on the um. Yeah, on the on the more mouthfeel side of things, just to finish off, brain's going dead. On the mouthfeel side of things with this beer then, um, I would say that this beer is, um, for me it's kind of mid-bodied, maybe pushing toward the top end of mid-bodied. Yeah, top end of mid bodied. The carbonation is a uh, the carbonation is very smooth in this one. For sure, it leans more toward the creamy side of things. As I said, this is a more oaty leaning New England IPA, but on the uh, yeah, so on the yeah, on that kind of fruity side of things, it's really got more of a kind of juicy fruity character out of this one I would say uh, but on the um, yeah more of a juicy kind of fruity character of this one for me rather than being more oily and things but the malt base as we've said has a little bit of graininess to it but also quite a little bit of creaminess uh, and it's the creaminess has come from the oats and the barley malt is giving you a little bit of fluffiness and dryness in there but when it comes to the IBUs with this beer I think it's pretty standard I think it's about a 30 IBU maybe 25 uh, IBU New England IPA this one so definitely within the the sort of remit of the style if we can call it that 
So, yeah, quite a creamy, oaty leaning New England IP, but quite a bit of barley malt to it as well. 30 IBUs, and as I say, nice and juicy and fruity. It's really showing you the softer side of uh, Citra with this one. So the name Citra Kiss, I think, works uh, works really quite well. I can really see why this beer was quite interesting to Jessica and why she thought I should review this one. So a big thank you to her once again for giving me the bottle and making this review possible. But I think that is everything we really need to say about this beer. So, yeah, this one is the uh, Him, uh, Him to You, Home for Christmas, Citra Kiss from Abeltoff Gore Brewery on uh, the Jerusalem Peninsula in Mittuiland in Denmark. Uh, really cool to uh, return to these guys and try one of their IPAs for the first time in quite a wee while. So, uh, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Abeltoff Gore Brewery as well, and we will see about returning to these guys at some point in the very near future. But yeah, this one was really nice. Thank you again for watching. Check out my social media. Check out Abletoff social media. Do check out the guys at the Beer Hive in Amar in Copenhagen. And we'll see what we can do again from Denmark very, very soon. Slange it, Scott. Cheers. See you guys on the next review.